preaching against sin was not rooted in dislike but is rooted in love and a desire to see people delivered how many know that God is a deliverer and if you're here today and somebody has abused you in your life you don't have to live your life in the shadow of that God knows how Jesus knows how to set you free and to give you the power to take that which was done to destroy you and to use that to be uh, the, the springboard for your success. Won't he do it? Say amen. Paul prayed for them. His preaching was earnest, but he, but he knew that preaching alone cannot convert. So he added prayer. Paradoxically, it is Israel's zeal for God that constituted their greatest barrier. And the apostle knows whereof he speaks, for his zeal for Judaism made him a notoriously wicked man. It was Paul's zeal that made him persecute the church the Bible says in Acts 22 and 3 I am verily I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus a city in Cilicia yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous Toward God as ye all are this day. And in his zeal, he says, and I persecuted. It wasn't called Christianity at that time. He says, I persecuted this way unto death. I persecuted all who was caught up in this new movement. At that time, it was called the way. Binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Before he met Jesus, his zeal for what he truly believed had him fighting God's truth. You know, happy warriors, we got to pray for those escorts. As I was studying this, I thought about them. Because a lot of them really believe that stuff, right? They really believe that a woman has a right, a God-given right, to decide to kill her unborn child. In their minds, it's actually a women's rights issue. And they stand out there in the sun like we do. Praise the Lord. And they, they insult, they lie, they do all kinds of things to convince women to exercise their rights. I heard a African-American civil rights leader the other day call abortion for black women. She called it reproductive justice. There's got to be something deeply wrong going on in you to where you call the slaughter of your own reproductive justice what is just about stopping a heartbeat that has committed no crime what is just about terminating a life that you didn't give would it have been just had your mama terminated yours and yet they call it just. And the thing that you have to keep in mind is many of them actually believe this. And they're zealous for what they believe. 
Paul believed at one point in his life that Christianity was not of God. He believed that Jesus was an imposter. He believed that those who followed Jesus, the Jews who followed Jesus, was traitors to the Jewish race. He believed that Jesus was a traitor, a traitor to the law of Moses, a traitor to the traditions of the elders. Many believe that because when President Obama uh, enacted policies that went against the Bible and when we stood against and opposed, uh, we, we, when we opposed him because he opposed God, there were many who sincerely believed that I was wrong and that we were wrong because how can a black man go against another black man? Well, easy if that black man is going against the Lord because God's truth is not bound by color. I didn't just disagree with him. I disagree with President Bush on issues. I just disagree with President Clinton on issues and so forth and so on. I disagree with the one we have now on certain issues. But it was allowed then. But for some reason we felt that because this, this one was of color that you're supposed to go along with everything. But you can't do that and represent the Lord. And so we suffered. And, and Paul, in, in our zeal, I understand it, in our zeal to see a black, a uh, well, half black man get that far. In our excitement to see someone occupying the White House uh, who looks like us and, and, and walk like us. In the zeal to see that. In many ways, we began to become blind to our own Christian faith. Zeal is a powerful thing. You have to control, oh, I'm preaching, zeal. Many of us today are zealous, but wrong. Sincere, but wrong. Well-meaning, but wrong. Most people have an intense distaste for being told that they're wrong. They have a greater distaste for being told that they're wrong than they have a distaste for being wrong. Our problem doesn't seem to be that we are wrong. The problem today seems to be that we are told that we're wrong. We can be wrong all day as long as no one tells us and we're just fine. But the moment someone tells us that we're wrong, instead of trying to get right, we get mad with the one who told us. Who told us? Praise the Lord. Whether or not, whether or not the person was guilty of what they're accused of ain't the point. The point is somebody ratted on them. Somebody told them. That, that's, that's backwards thinking. Say amen. amen. The Jews that Paul was praying for, I'm, I'm, I'm about to bring this home, were sincere in their opposition of Jesus. But they were wrong. They were missing a move of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In our text, the apostle Paul is not mad. He's noisy angry with his own people or at his own people. In fact, the text reveals uh, that he has, he, he uh, has affection for them. You look at them, he says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. Heart's desire uh, is, uh, he says, my wish. A heart's desire is a wish. It is a longing. It is a craving. He says, I, I feel some kind of way toward my own people. In Romans chapter 9 and in Romans chapter uh, uh, 10, the apostle Paul is not racist, but he is racial. 
because much of what he's feeling is based on he, uh, his being a Jew, his people being Jews of Israel, and Jesus being a Jew, and how his people missed what God was doing in Jesus. John said that Jesus came to his own, to the Jewish people, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. It troubles me when I see uh, what the devil is doing to my own. My own has terminated so many of us since 73 that it equals the population of the state of North Carolina. Anywhere you go in this state and everywhere you go and where you see people, that's the number of us who are not here due to just one thing, abortion. And if there's anybody here who's had one and you've repented, you're forgiven. I'm not talking about you. I'm trying to save the next child. So hear me well. Because, you know, I, I, I see what happens. I understand. But if God's forgiven you, you're forgiven. You can't go back and change anything. You, you, you're forgiven like the person next to you. But, but we still got to try and, and save the next baby. And, and see, in the black church, it has been determined that the black community is the community in America that is least likely to hear a sermon that deals with the sanctity of human life. See, our, pre our preachers are failing us because they don't talk about anything except coming out and getting more money and you get, God is going to fix it for you. Well, what is it? We got to talk about something other than creature comforts. Amen. That, that, that's, that's part of it, but you got to talk about something else. And there's a slaughter going on. And uh, this, this breakout, you know, people ask me, say, why are you talking about homosexuality and lesbians so much? I said, because other preachers talk about it so little. Somebody got to say something. Our boys being turned out every time you turn around. I saw a commercial the other day. I saw a commercial of, it's a Microsoft commercial. And it's showing this school teacher, a black male. Now, I know it's not a private school. Where the man is the teacher, they call him the hip hop teacher. And so he do rhymes, but he's got his hair stacked up on top of his head, acts like a sissy, looks terrible, and who would pay to have their child in a class where the male teacher acts like a woman, got his hair, what you call that style? You ladies got your hair up like that. What's that style? I mean, you got your hair up. What is it? A bun? Is that what it is? A bun? Man got his hair up in a bun. And acting like a, a lady. And rapping. And you mean tell me that's the class? You gonna drop your child off in? Oh no. It's time to cancel the cable bill, pray everything else, and get me some private school money and put that child in a class. Because you don't want them to be looking at stuff like that. I'm going to preach in just a minute. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, I know y'all didn't think becoming bishop would change my preaching, did you? You couldn't have thought that. Because I don't know how to preach but one way. One way. Straight. Amen. And you brothers, we have a lot of men. God's going to send us more men. Because our men need to gravitate to churches where they're hearing the truth and being challenged. I, I, amen. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, abortion in our community is not just a male, a female issue. The statistics show that 81% of the time, if the man would take care of the baby, the lady would have the baby. Amen. 
Brothers aren't saying anything now. Yeah, she would if he would. He told you he was loving you when it was, yeah, oh, I love you so much. I just, I just love you. Oh, oh. Turn out the lights and light the candle. Love, love wouldn't let you wait. Now you're running the other way. Turn out the light and look at me high. And then you come and say, oh, I'm late. Is it mine? It ain't mine. Oh, that's so bad. It's the number one killer of black people. And you can't get nobody, we can't get any Black Lives Matter people to go to the clinic with us. That's why it's a sham. I don't have any respect for any of them. They won't go and protest in the number one place where blacks are being killed. Instead, they go find a police officer who, praise the Lord, in, in some cases, wrong, but in some cases, right. right. Praise the Lord. Right. So, it ought to bother you. I'm not lost. It ought to bother you when you see things happening to your own. It ought to bother you when you see things happening to people, period. But listen, uh, saints, we are a minority in this country. And we're the only minority in the country who's not growing. And our preachers won't talk about it. We're not growing. Why is it that we're always 11%? We might jump up to 13, then run back down to 11 because we're killing ourselves. Too many of our men are chasing men. And then, you brothers of marrying age, you need to be married. We need, you need to be married. You need a wife. A wife is good for a man. Amen. A man needs a wife. I'll, I'll show you how important a wife is. Adam had the world. Adam had a job. Adam was in perfect health. Adam was created with a perfect vocabulary. Adam could walk. He never crawled. Adam was a superior being. God visited Adam every evening. They talked, the voice of God talked to him every day and he still needed a wife. Now, what does that tell you? Still needed a woman. Wow. And needed one. He needed, and, and, and you know what? And none existed. God said, you know what? I'm going to make one for him. Go to sleep. Adam fell out. Go to sleep. God told, said, watch this surgery. The Lord reached into him. Took out a rib and some flesh, sold him back up, uh, and done. Then, 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 then woke him up and said, "Check this out." <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> when God got through, God said. Now, I know you've seen an elephant, a giraffe, a grizzly bear, a shark, some long-necked dinosaurs, but look at this. Adam said, no, nah, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Yeah, she looked like me, but she's different. said, I'm going to call her woman. 
because she was taken from the man. See, now some, somebody got too smart and said, you know, a woman is nothing but a man with a womb. You know, a guy told me that one time. I told him, I said, you might have married a man with a womb. I didn't marry a man with anything. Not me. Not, not, not Patrick Wooden. No, sir. You never get beat by that. I don't yield that point. Well, why the word woman? The Bible tells you. It tells you why woman. Because she was taken from the man. It gives you the definition. That which was taken from the man. Eve was made. It tells you how he made her from his rib. She was taken from the man, made for the man. And made, uh, Eve wasn't made with the angels in mind, brothers. Eve wasn't made with God in mind, brothers. Eve was made with the man in mind. So every man ought to want to have what God made for him. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Now, brethren, y'all might sit down on me now. Now, you can't have all of them. Let me put a little let me put a little brakes on this car. Y'all get too happy. You got to pick one. <laughs> Somebody said, shucks, one. And uh, amen. And the Lord will bless you. So so you 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 know. <laughs> it troubles me that our beautiful women are the most unmarried women in America. That's a fact. That's a fact. Black women are the most unmarried. And it's certainly not because you're not pretty. It's certainly not because you're not wife material. It's liberalism. It's bad preaching. It's bad teaching. Uh, men have gone astray. Paul was opining what was happening to his people. Can I get a witness? So I can opine what's happening to mine. My people, that is, my race, and my people, that is, fellow Americans. Amen. So he says, my heart's desire and craving Rocky, it's time to strike up the band for God, to God, for Israel. He didn't just have a wish, but Tom, he threw in it a prayer. Paul here says, I have wishes for them, but I want to put with my wish power. I want to pray. Pray for what? Pray that they might be saved. Ahead of the economy ahead of jobs, ahead of happiness and education, beyond going to college and making money, before power, fortune, and fame, ahead of national security and border protection. Paul said, I'm praying that they might be saved. I want you to know that if you don't get saved, you were better, it would have been better off for you not to have even been born. According to a, a George Bonner study, only one out of seven, 14% of the Christian parents identified that were polled, identified as their biggest challenge, moral, raising moral children with strong faith. That is, just one in seven said, I want my children to be saved. I want my children Praise the Lord to have a strong faith. And only one out of ten uh, said that uh, investing in Bible study and religious activities was uh, one of the main things that they wanted for their children. Parents, while you hold them, you ought to want them to know who the Lord is. Parents, I know you want them to be athletes but you ought to want them to be Christian athletes. 
good God Almighty. I know you want them uh, to grow up and be little geniuses and make good money, but you ought to want them to be sanctified, church of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you ought to want them to know who the Lord is. If my son or daughter never become millionaires, if they never become, praise the Lord, astronauts, if they never become famous, amen, and have their name plastered everywhere like the Kardashians, I don't care about that stuff at all. I want Crystal and Patrick to know who Jesus is. And I want John Patrick, John Jr. and Pamela to know who the Savior is. And parents, you ought to put salvation at the top of the meter. Every woman ought to want her husband to be saved. Every husband ought to want his wife to be saved. If we, we ought to pray, we ought to pray ahead of before we pray that affirmative action stay in place. Before we pray that the government give us another dime. Before we pray and get caught up in all of these frivolous things, we need to pray and say, God save, save our nation, save our people, save our children. Because if you don't get saved, it won't even matter. I got something to tell you. In my closing, I want to tell you something that forever lasts a long time. Forever will outlast time. When time shall be no more, forever will still be going a trillion years from now. Forever will just be getting started. If you get saved, you go to heaven to be there forever. But if you miss salvation, you go to hell and you will be there forever. It's better to never have been born than to leave here and not be saved. Saints! We need to pray that the Lord save our sons, save our daughters, save our neighborhood, save our lawyers, save our president, save the Congress, save the Senate, save the governor. Oh, oh Lord, save everywhere. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.